ready. We are ready. Now, first off, okay, so tonight we're going to be covering, um, we're going to be covering Malachi uh, chapter 3. Uh, will a man rob God? We're dealing with tithes and offering. We're teaching all things tithes and offering tonight. Okay, so first off, I want to say this one thing, which is um, the church must be supported. The church must be supported. This is not a teaching to, to stop you from giving. You know what I'm saying? This is not a teaching to stop you from giving. The church must be supported. Because as we understand, um, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6 says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So what this means is that there are blessings attached to your giving. So in this study, what's going to happen is, um, we're going to break down Malachi 3, as I said. Um, but before we get there, there are a lot of things that we need to understand about tithes and offering, even before we get to, um, before we get to that point. Okay, so um, some of the things that we will address, as I, and I'm reiterating some of this, is tithes and offering. Um, what did they refer to? What's the purpose for tithing? Um, also, we need to understand the tithing cycle. Uh, we'll, we'll cover the 12 tribes of Israel. We'll cover the Levites and their connection to tithing. Um, also, let's see, we'll, we'll discover some, we'll cover a few issues, which is why people will say that, oh, I think this is why we still should be tithing. And some of those issues are that... Um, about the money. Did Israel have money? Because people say that, okay, the crops was their money. So we'll cover that tonight. And also, there's another thing that Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. So we will cover that as well. Uh, also, the New Testament law of giving. Um, and how was tithing re-implemented? And also, why is this teaching important? Why is this teaching important? important. Uh, Solana, are you monitoring that? Okay. All right. So and if, if there's a question or whatever, uh, if you can, you can uh, ask it. Okay. So let's go to, let's get into Malachi. Let's go to uh, Malachi 8, which says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Verse 11, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy your fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And verse 11, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, this has become Malachi 3 has become the, the scripture used in, 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 in many churches to enforce and or justify giving your money. There is a connection to it that, that if you don't give your money, that you are what? That you are cursed. And they use this scripture to justify it. But I have a question, which is, what if I told you that tithing never referred to money? And that we have developed the wrong meaning of tithing. That's one question I want you to consider. Another thing is, what if I told you that tithing was under the law of Moses? 
And the New Testament did not teach tithing. Another thing for your consideration. So Malachi 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed? Um, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So now, let's get into it. First of all, like I said, there are a few things that we have, there are a lot of things that we have to understand even before we get to Malachi 3. There are a lot, so many things that we have to understand before we get to Malachi 3. Hey, what's going on? All right, so let's start with um, what does tithe and offering mean? What does offering mean? We'll start with offering because offering is simple. What does offering mean? Okay. So we find out that, and, and here's why I said earlier, you needed to have the uh, Blue Letter Bible or some type of concordance. Because if you click on that word um, on, on offering, it'll, it'll take you to the Hebrew word that tells you exactly what it is. We're on Malachi 3. Okay? It'll tell you exactly what that word meant because the, the Old Testament was in Hebrew, New Testament, Greek, and Latin. Okay? So since it's the Old Testament, uh, offering is from the Hebrew word terumah. Terumah, which means offering, contribution, offering to God, an offering of grain, money. See that? So we see money clearly there, right? Terumah, offering, contribution, offering to God, an offering of grain, money, etc. We see money there, okay? Now... What are the types of offerings? The Bible lists six types of offering, and five of them are, uh, are listed in, in Leviticus 1 through 5. They list uh, five types of offering. The first one is the whole burnt offering, offering which is for atonement. And I'm not going to really go in, in depth and cover these things, like go in the scriptures and read them, because we have a lot to cover. Um, so what, what you guys can do is we have the, the chapter, you, you can just read that on your own, but we're going to just cover what the, what the main types are. So the first type of offering is the whole burnt offering, that's for atonement. Uh, the grain offering is covered in chapter 2, that's the gift to God. The third one is the peace offering, which is for fellowship, that's in chapter 3. Four is the purification offering for unintentional sin. That's something that's very important. You see that? That purification offering was for unintentional sin. So the sin that they had no idea that they committed, there was an offering for that. That's in chapter 4. Um, the fifth type of offering is uh, the reparation offering. And this, is, this was for restitution. We find that in chapter 5. And that sixth type of offering, we will come back and uh, discuss it a little bit later. Okay. So, what we find out is the purpose of the offering system uh, was for worship and to atone for sin. Okay. So now, let's go to tithing. What does tithe mean? What does tithe mean? Now, when we look at um, when we look at at, at, at um, Malachi three and eight, it says that will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? So, what does tithe mean? Now, according to the concordance, tithe means it's from the Hebrew word ma'aser, ma'aser, and it means a tenth part. Payment of a tenth part. Now, does anybody notice one thing that's, that's, that's clear between offering and tithe? Because offering clearly said what? That it could be what? Money. Mm -hmm. All right. But here, with, with tithe, it says a tenth part. Payment of a what? Tenth part. Tenth part. Okay. That's very important to understand. All right. Now, let's, let's get through because this is going to get kind of interesting. We have a lot to cover tonight. It's going to really get uh, interesting. So now, let's, let's understand this about the tithing. Okay. So, tithing operated 
on what is called the Shemitah cycle. Shemitah means every seven years, sabbatical. Okay? Every seven years is what it, it, it means. Okay? Y'all understand that? So, and we find this when we go to, um, when we go to Leviticus 25, um, when we go to Leviticus 25, 1 through 7, I don't have it up here in the uh, notes, somehow I skipped that. Leviticus 25, 1 through 7 tells us that, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Okay? You understand that? Mm -hmm. I don't know how I missed that. Okay. Uh, verse 3 says, Six years thou shalt sow in thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. How many years? Six years. Verse 4 says, But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. That's Leviticus 25 and 4. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Verse 5 says, That which groweth of his own accord of thy vineyard, harvest of thy harvest, thou shalt reap. Um, thou shalt not reap, excuse me, neither gather the grapes of thine vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. So it's saying that, what, what this is saying is that six years you can do everything that you need to do in the land. But in the seventh year is a, a, a sabbatical into the land. You can't do anything. You can't prune it. Okay? Verse 6 says, And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and for thy servant and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant and for thy strangers that sojourn it with thee. And for thy cattle and for thy beasts that are in thy land shall all the increase thereof be meat. So we understand that you could not prune the, um, in that, in that seventh year, you could not prune the, um, the, uh, the, the field. Okay? Y'all with me, right? Yeah. So there was no sowing nor reaping in the what year? In the seventh year. Okay. All right, now, here is something that's, that's, that's very important that we can't miss. I need y'all to have that, um, that, um, that Leviticus 25, Leviticus 25, because in, in verse 2, there's something very important. Y'all following me? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, Salam, do you have 25 and 2? Yeah. All right, read 25 and 2, please. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Okay. So, first of all, this lets us know that it was under the law of Moses. That this tithing system that was based on the Shemitah cycle was under the law of Moses. Y'all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's saying that verse, uh, verse 25 and 2 says that when ye come into the land which I give you, then shall ye keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. So it's only once you get into the land. Y'all with me, right? All right? Now, let, let me ask you a question. What was the law of Moses and its purpose? Does anybody know that? What was the law of Moses and its purpose? To teach the people how to um, act in the land, how to act, act in themselves. That's right, in the land. Here we go, Deuteronomy 12. And one says, these are what? Statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do where? In the land. In the land. You see that? Mm -hmm. Which the Lord thy God thy fathers giveth thee to possess it. All the days that ye live upon the earth. But it is only for what? In the land. Y'all understand that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's something that's very important that we, 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 don't, um, we don't miss that. It's for the land. So basically, what we understand is that um, what we understand is that that the laws of Moses were the 613 laws that were for the promised land. Statutes and judgments. An eye for an eye. That's a judgment. Okay, do not mix linen and, and, uh, linen and wool. You see, those laws, those are rituals. But they was for the promised land. It was all about clean and unclean. 
Y'all understand that? In the promised land. That's what the purpose of the laws of Moses was. Now, just so you can, just so you can hold something in your mind, this is the law. When, when Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 17, uh, think not that, that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. He's talking about that law of Moses. Okay? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about fulfilling that these statutes and judgments because it's no longer an eye for an eye, right? We have grace now, right? right. And, and if you don't understand, say like, um, uh, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, you know, God is jealous, no other God before him. That can't be fulfilled. That can't be completed. That's that's throughout. Y'all y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Not the lie, not the steal. That's throughout. But however, these statutes and judgments for the promised land, that, that could change. That's what he fulfilled. Okay? We was talking about the land. Okay? And we understand that God promised land to who? Israel. To Israel. So Israel is who? God's chosen people. Right? Mm -hmm. God's chosen people is Israel. Okay? So um, let's see the connection. We, we understand that, and I'm just showing you this because we just read about the land, but I'm giving you, I'm going to give you more information than you, you'll probably need so you can get a, a, a deeper understanding. Okay, but in Genesis 15 and 18, uh, in the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Okay, so we're understanding that, right? Okay, so now let's let's get into the land. So God's chosen people who was who? Israel, Israel, right? Was promised land. Okay, so now let's look at something. The 12 tribes of Jacob, the, 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 the uh, 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Okay, so you had Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, and Benjamin. These were his 12 sons. The 12 tribes of Israel. But now, here's something that I always say. There are actually 14 tribes. When it comes to the land, there's going to be 14. And sometimes it's a bit confusing. But let's tell you, let me show you why there is 14. Because when we understand Joseph, Joseph received a double portion. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's the 12 plus 2. Is going to equal 14, right? Now, but here's how it still ends up being 12. Because Levite didn't receive land. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Joseph himself didn't receive land. His two sons received it. So when it came to the land, you had Reuben, Simeon, Judah, Zebulun, Issachar, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin. So when it came to the land, no land for Joseph, no land for Levi. Okay? We understand that? Mm -hmm. But we need to understand why. So we need, we need to understand why did not... <coughs> why didn't the Levites receive land? Does anybody know? Why didn't the Levites receive land? Because they want to keep the tabernacle. All right. Okay. Let's go here. So we're getting into the purpose of tithing here. Deuteronomy 10 and 8 says, At that time the Lord separated who? The tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless him his name unto this day. Okay? Mm -hmm. Therefore, Levi had no part nor inheritance with his brother. He didn't receive land. Why? The no, Lord is inheritance. inheritance. According as the Lord thy God promised him. So do we see that? Right? Yeah. Now, now keep paying attention. Watch this. Numbers 18. 18, 26 through 28. I will just do 26. 26 says... Thus ye also shall offer and heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes. Who, who is, okay, this, because he's talking to, y'all understand, he's talking to Levi right here. 
which ye receive of the children of Israel. So, pay attention. Thus, ye also shall offer and heave offering <coughs> unto the Lord of all your tithes. So, it's saying that Levite, you're going to offer heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes. Y'all see that? Y'all understanding that, right? Which ye receive of the children of Israel. Why? Why are they receiving it? Thus ye also shall offer ye offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Israel, and ye shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering unto Aaron the priest. Why were they um why were they receiving the, the heave offering? Y'all don't know? Okay, let me tell you why. Because they didn't receive land. Since they didn't receive land, what God did is gave them the tithe. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Because they didn't receive the land, God set Levi aside to minister and take care of the, the, the tabernacle. They received the tithes. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Y does, uh, is this making sense to you? you you're looking. You, you, you all right? You all right? Okay. Okay. So... The children of Israel was promised land. Mm -hmm. Levite was separated from them. And from the land, remember they were to do these things once they got into the land, right? From the land, they were to give tithe to the priests. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and we're going to cover what this, this verse is saying. We're gonna, because this is one of the types of tithe. We'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that uh, very shortly. So basically what happened is the, uh, the tithes were given of the Holy Land and to the Levites as their inheritance. Okay, y'all with me, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't, if y'all, if you have a question, stop me so I can stop and break it down. All right. Now, understand this. We, we just said that, you know, that the tithe was part of the, the, uh, the seven-year cycle, the Shemitah cycle. Now, this is... Uh, one thing about the uh, about the Bible, I'll give you this right quick. It's called the heptatic structure, right? Remember, I, I said that before. The heptatic structure. What is the heptatic structure? It's the, the 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 number is seven. Because all throughout the Bible, you find the number seven. Everything is connected to seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we understand that to, you know in in Hebrew. Um, I don't really know Hebrew, but from what I've been reading and, 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 and studying, you know, when you get to the, the, the Torah and stuff like that, the numbers are divisible by seven. The words are divisible by seven. Um, seven is just all throughout, you know, basically. And they call that the heptatic structure, which is another thing that, that lets you know that man could not have uh, written the Bible. Okay? All right. So, anyway, this goes to the, the, the tithing cycle as well because there's seven types of uh, Tithe. First of all, there is the yearly tithe. Okay? What's the name of it? The yearly tithe. And I'll give you an example of it. The yearly tithe, Leviticus 27 and 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy unto the Lord. Now, when, while we're reading these things, I want y'all to start paying attention to what they're saying that tithes are. Because we already know that the tithes has to come from where? Where does the tithe come from? The land. The land, the, land, the promised land. Okay? So right here we see, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. All right? And let me show you. Let's go ahead and read verse 31 while we're here. And if a man will at all <coughs> redeem aught of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. What is that saying? Oh, what I say. It's saying that if a man wants to keep his tithe, he would add money to it, add a fifth to it. Okay? So and if a man... So if he wanted to keep the fruit of his tree, mm -hmm. he would have to add. He would add a fifth to it, and so he would pay what it was worth plus a fifth. Okay? Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> keep going, because I, I don't want you to be messed up on that um, as an example, okay? All right. So then there was the festival tide. This is the second one. The festival tide. 
Um, Deuteronomy 14, um, 22 says, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy what? Seed. That the field bring it forth each year. See, because right now we make seed be what? Money. Money. But it says increase of thy seed that the what? Yeah. That the field yeah. bring forth. Okay, ain't no way to change that into money. Okay, verse 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, the tithe of thy wine, thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. So we're seeing, we saw some more things there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's go to, um, yeah, that was 23. Um, 24 says, and if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, what are we talking about? Carrying what? The tithe. We're talking about the tithe. Mm. If the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not, let's, let's go back, let's go back to 23. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Do y'all understand what this saying? The place where he shall choose to place his name, that's talking about the Ark of Covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right? The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, thy oil, and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. That you see the connection there, right? Mm -hmm. Tithing is connected to learning to fear the Lord thy God always. Y'all understand? Keep that in mind. Verse 24 says, And if the way be too long for thee, what way? Where God has chosen to place his name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, your tithe, if you're not able to carry your tithe, mm -hmm. because if it's your money, you could just put it in your pocket, that you're not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, then shall thou, what? Turn, turn it into money. money. Turn it into money. Turn what into money? The yeah. tithe. So turn your tithe into money. Mm. And bind up the money in thy hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Wow. Are y'all seeing that? Mm-hmm. Y'all sure y'all seeing that? Mm -hmm. So let, let's go here. Because we saw a few things. Let's go. So the question is, did Israel have money? Because why are we asking this? Because there are some people that will say what? That the tithe at the time was their money. So did Israel have money? Leviticus 27, 31. Remember, and if a man will at all redeem all of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. We also just saw that what? If it, the place was too far, then you could what? Turn it into money. Mm -hmm. So that proved that what? <clears throat> they had money. They had money. So that proves that what? Tithing had nothing to do with their money. Mm -hmm. But let's continue. Let's continue. We're still talking about the festival tithe. Verse 26. And thou shalt be stoned that money for what's, whatsoever thy soul lusted after. Okay, so what we're still we're going back to talking about the festival tithe. If it was too far, they would convert it into money. Now, when they get there, when they get to the place where God has chosen to place His name there, now it says, "And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted after." Mm. Who is it for? For Israel. It's for them. Mm -hmm. Y'all seeing this? Mm -hmm. For oxen or for sheep or for wine. Because some people are say that, remember, I think, Contrary, you said something about the wine. You was taught that the wine was different, right? Right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Or for wine, or for what? Strong drink. Strong, strong drink. drink. Okay, that covers that, right? That, that shows you wine and strong drink. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because it was not a sin to drink. Okay? Because we know that the, the Jews, they, they had vineyards. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or for whatsoever thy soul desires. So it's saying that you are tied. For the festival tide, you're able to buy whatever you want to use your tithe for. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. Verse 27, watch this. And the Levite that is within thy gates, thou shalt not forsake him. Don't forget about Levi. Right? Because remember, the tithe was for who? 
for Levi, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have no inheritance in the land. So it's something right here. For this type of time, for the festival time, don't forsake Levi. For he had no part, mm -hmm. no inheritance with thee. You see that? Mm -hmm. Y'all with me on that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me, let me tell you a little bit about this festival time. Um, basically, three times a year, Israel had to keep a, um, a feast in, a, in the year, but it was the men of Israel. They had to keep a feast before the Lord three times a year. That's, that was the festival time. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, I guess we... Let me show you quick, right quick, the rules of the feast. It had to be within the city where the temple was located. Israel provided the food. They provided their own food for it. Uh, if the city where the temple was located was too far, the tithe was converted to money. We just read that. And the money was taken to the temple where the city was. Once at the city, the money was then used to buy whatever food or wine needed for the feast because it was for them. The meal was shared with the Levites, widows, strangers, and who? The and the poor. Hmm. <laughs> and they were forced to rejoice. Okay, but you see the poor, right? So let me throw something else out there to you. The poor people did not pay tithes. Uh, hold on to that. It's getting kind of quiet now. Just hold on to that. All right, next we have the third year tithe. Deuteronomy 14, 28. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thine gates. And the Levite, because God is constantly reminding you, don't forget Levi. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any inheritance in the land. And the Levite, because he had no part nor inheritance with thee, and the strangers, and the fatherless, and the widows, which are within thy gates, shall come, and shall what? Eat, Eat and, be and be satisfied. Hmm. That the Lord thy God may bless thee and all the work of thine hand, which thou doest. So there's blessings connected to the to them keeping up that tithe, that system that God had in place. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give the chosen people the land. What grows from the land, you give it to, to the Levites, right? Because they're going to feed you what? What are the Levites feeding you? The word. The word of God. Okay. All right. And once again, we see that, we see the poor there again, you know, poor was able to come and eat freely, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Deuteronomy 26 and 12 Still talking about the third year time When thou hast made an end of all When thou hast made an end of tithing All the tithes of thine increase In the third year Which is the year tithing And has given it unto the Levite See that? Still tithing to the mm -hmm. Levite We're going we're gonna to continue seeing that Tithing and Levite is together mm -hmm. You don't see one without the other the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt lay before the Lord thy God. I have brought away the hollow things out of mine house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and unto the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow. Widow, according to all thy commandments, which thou hast commanded me, I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. So what this is saying is, Guess what? This was under the law of Moses. Now, I'm saying this. They were required to do this. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's saying that, guess what? I done did everything that you done commanded me to do. So I haven't transgressed thy commandments. Neither have I forgotten them. That's very important as we go forward. Now, the third year time, remember, because we're talking about what? That seven year cycle. Right? So that means that the third year time happened when? The third and the sixth year. The third and the sixth year. Okay? Mm -hmm. The third and the sixth year. All right? Y'all y'all with me, right? Mm -hmm. Happened in the third and the sixth year. All right, then we move on to the tithe of tithe. Okay, because this is what we was covering earlier when we was talking about the Levites. Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of the tithes? When you take up the children of Israel, the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, okay? Then ye shall offer up what? 
and heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the time. So watch this. So what this is saying is the Levites had to take a tenth of what they got the that, that they taught, and they offered it to the priest, to Aaron in the priesthood. Y'all understand that? <clears throat> Y'all understand in that part? Mm -hmm. Thus ye shall offer and heave offering unto the Lord of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Israel. And ye shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. And this is called the what? Levitical tithe. The Levitical tithe. So they're going to take a tenth of what they have and give it to the priest. Mm -hmm. Okay? Y'all with me? All right, so let me let me. So it, it's important to to find out. Okay, now well let's 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 define who the Levites were, because we already know there was a tribe that God set apart, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but specifically, Nehemiah thirteen and five says, and he had prepared for him a great chamber, where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels. Those are offerings now, and the tithes of corn. Here we go to, with the tithes. The new wine, the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites. Once again, we're still seeing that science commanded to be given to the Levites. Mm -hmm. And the what? Singers. Singers and the porters mm -hmm. and the offerings of the priests. So basically what we find out, Levites was everybody that worked in the, in the, in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Okay, the porters, the janitors, the gatekeepers. All of those were considered to be Levites. Mm -hmm. So they worked in the house of God. You fed them. Y'all understand this? Mm -hmm. They didn't have to do anything because the, the, that which came from the land was given to them to support them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right? And in return, what did they do? They fed the children okay. of Israel. Okay, they fed the children of Israel. Okay. All right. So now, uh, and the last thing was the, the, the seventh year tithe. Okay, we already covered that. Remember, we covered it earlier. In seven years, it was a tithe of the land, Sabbath of the land, right? Rest of the land, right? Mm -hmm. There was no sowing or reaping, no harvesting for the storehouse. That's very important. No harvesting for what? The storehouse. Israel was allowed to eat whatever that grew what? Naturally. Naturally. Animals were not to work the land either. So you couldn't, uh, you couldn't work the land because it was uh, rest for the land in that time, right? Right. Okay. Also, during this time, and what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give something to you so you can understand what was taking place then and what's taking place now. Okay? I want y'all to make that, that correlation. Um, also, in that seven year, at the end of, there was a debt cancellation. At the end of seven years, thou shalt make a release. Right? And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lended ought unto his neighbor shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it was caused, it was called what? The, the Lord's, Lord's release. release. Now, this was only for Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, those that were not the foreigners, it didn't, uh, it didn't pertain to them because after it was over, they could put it on them again for the foreigners. Mm -hmm. All right? All right. So, so the types of tithing was what? The, uh, the yearly... Mm -hmm. The festival, the third year, the tithe of tithes, and the seventh year. Okay, the tithe of tithes is the, the Levitical tithe. Okay, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's get to, um, so let's go. What did tithing refer to? Okay, because we've already um, saw um, corn, wine, oil, herds, and flocks, right? We've already seen that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We haven't seen that tithe refer to money, right? Right. Only time it referred to money when they said what? Convert it. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to keep your tithe, then you add money to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. What did tithe refer to? Leviticus 27 and 30 says, and all the tithe of the land. So it referred to what? All the tithe of the land. It referred to the land. Once again. And whether of the Seed. seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord because the land was what? Holy. The land was holy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Please don't forget that. The land was what? Holy. 
the lamb was holy. Now let's go to, and, and we're going through here just to show you all the mentions of, of tithes and what they were. Second Chronicles 31 and 5 says, And as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of what? Israel. Corn. Corn. Wine. 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 Oil. 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 Honey. Oil. Honey. Oil. Of the increase of the what? Field. And the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. All of those things they just say. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah. Now, okay, let me ask you a question. Why are we seeing Israel and Judah here? Because it was a split. Because by now it had split. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Israel was the, 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 the northern kingdom and Judah was the southern kingdom. Mm -hmm. All right, they split. Okay, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. That dwelt, okay, and concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah... They also brought in the tithe of what? Oxen, Oxen and sheep. sheep. And the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them by what? The heaps. And laid them by heaps. That's piles. That's stacks. Okay? All right. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Let's see. Where am I at here? Um, Nehemiah 10 and 37. And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough. Now, is that money dough? No. <laughs> no, it's talking about real dough. Mm -hmm. And our offerings, and the and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine, and of oil unto the priest. To who? The priest. Still, you're still giving it to the priest. Mm -hmm. To the chambers of the house of God. To the chambers of the house of God. And the tithe of our ground. ground Unto the Levites, and the same Levites may have the tithes in all the cities of our what? Tillage. tillage. Uh huh. What is tillage? That's when you, it's connected to gardening. Working the land. You work in the land. The you see that? So that's once again that's telling you the connection. You that see the that? Tithes come from the land. That's, that the tithe is coming from the land. That's a good question. All right. Um. Then we go to. Let me show you this. Matthew 23, because my thing is, I've said that what? I said that the New Testament did not teach tithing, mm -hmm. right? right? Now, we're going to see that, that Jesus, in Matthew 23, Jesus made a reference to tithing. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise in coming, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These all ye have done. And not to leave the other undone. Now, two things, let me say right quick. It said that they paid tithes of what? Men. Men and he's in coming. Amen. Did you see money? No. Because it's also right behind that saying, and you have omitted the weightier matters. So is the weightier matters money? No. No. You see? Judgment, mercy, and faith. Those are the weightier matters. Mm -hmm. You see that? But now let me let me get. I don't want to get too deep, but let me get deep real quick. You have to understand that, that even though Matthew is the New Testament, the way they put the books together, anything with Jesus, the New Testament should start with Acts. When Jesus, when, when the church began. That's when the New Testament should really start. Because that's, that's after Jesus died. See, that's why... Um, people have a problem understanding how he fulfilled the law. See, if it started over when, if it started over after he died, they will be able to understand that okay, all of this was under the law. But by starting in Matthew when Jesus came, mm -hmm. instead of when he died, that creates a problem for people. Mm -hmm. But understand this: the New Testament should start when when Jesus died. That's why the uh, Hebrews say that um, that the, uh, you have to have a, the death of the testator before the the testament is valid. You understand? So that means that when you have a will and testament, it's only valid when? After you die. Mm -hmm. After you die, your will kicks in. So after Christ died is when the new testament should kick in. Mm -hmm. Alright? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, real quick. So Jesus made a reference to it. Right? What's your question? My question is, um, when you say when you're supposed to admit, omit one, uh, one and need the other one undone, that, do, that doesn't mean that, uh, that both of them should be kept. The laws and the judgments and um, the mints and the 
in the coming. And okay, so listen to this though. What are we talking about though? What are we referring to? Go ahead. Go ahead. We refer to the the uh the tithe. Uh -huh. Down to the men's in the judgment, the right. laws. They don't if they say if you omitting one and keeping another one, you should have done both. It's saying that listen, yeah, they're saying that okay, you can't do one without the other. Without the other. See, because the thing is, understand this. See, this right here is visual. People see you doing that. Oh, I'm paying my tithes. Or I make sure I pay my tithe. But when it comes to mercy and faith, hmm, not so much. See, because we have to understand that the hypocritical element of believers has always been throughout. That's why Paul, when Paul started writing to these churches, he was putting things in order. Y'all praying like y'all hear people pray. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody talking in tongues. Paul had to set all of these things in order. What are y'all doing? <laughs> you say, you're trying to do what everybody else do. Mm -hmm. No, it's not the way it works. Okay? So that's more important than anything. anything. Yeah, know, of course it is. Part. Because understand this. So listen to this. The laws of Moses were rituals. You understand that? These were rituals that they were doing. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, which is why when Jesus came, Jesus is introducing faith. And they're not understanding it because according to the law, when they brought him the, the woman that had committed adultery, they said, hey, under Moses' law, she's supposed to be stoned. Stone her. Mm -hmm. You see? And Jesus said, okay, let, let he is with, without sin cast the first stone. They couldn't understand that because they, they, they're so caught up in the tradition. Okay? Y'all with me? All right. So, Tithing referred to agriculture, fruit, tree, fruit, trees, livestock, dough, wine, herbs, spice, and what? And oil. Okay? So now, let us go back to Malachi 3. All right? Since we have an understanding of everything that is going on, you know, what tithing was, what it referred to, all of these things. Now, give, let me give you uh, a, a piece of information. When Malachi 3 happens in verse 1, I mean, by the time Malachi comes along, let me tell you what's going on with Israel. We know that there's a split. But what has happened is they've gotten away from the system that God established. Remember, Israel was supposed to be, Israel was supposed to take the, the tithe and give to the Levite, right? And in return, Levite was teaching them the word of God, right? Mm. But what happened is, and, and, and notice that, that God always told Israel to what from the rest of the people? Separate. Don't mingle with them. But what has happened is, Israel started mingling, even that's why the uh, purpose of the split. They start mingling, they're, they're involved in idolatry, and all of these things that's going on. So, this is when we arrive at Malachi. So now they're getting everything back together. Y'all understand that? They're coming back. Now, let me. I'm going to start reading from verse 1, even though I don't have it on that. <clears throat> but I want you to understand, take that, listen to what I just said. Now they're coming back, trying to get back right with God. Okay? Malachi 3 and 1 says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. So that means that what? They're separated. Uh -huh. Y'all understand that? All right? The Lord whom ye seek, who you're looking for, shall suddenly come. Mm -hmm. Okay? Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 2. But who may abide the day of his coming? All right. Who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. We're talking about judgment. And he shall purify the sons of who? <coughs> Levi. And purge them as gold and silver. And they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. So it's telling them that, okay, God got to come in this judgment and change what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? And who, who is he saying to start with? Levi. Right? right. Verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. So look what he said. Then shall the offering be pleasant. 
Only once these things happen, right? As in the days of old, as in former years. So it said, okay, we understand they've been, they've been disobedient, right? Verse 5, and I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hirelings in his wages, the widow, the fatherless, and turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, said the Lord of hosts. Right? Now, verse 6, for I am the Lord. What? I changed not. So God is saying what? I didn't change. Y'all changed. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are what? Gone away, Gone away from my ordinances. Remember those statutes and judgments? Mm -hmm. hmm. And have not kept them. So now God is saying what? Return unto me. Return unto me. And I will return unto you. Said the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Where are we going to return it? Verse 8 said, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. Mm -hmm. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. So let's go, let's go and look at that. Let's go and look at these words. Verse 8, will a man rob God? What does it mean to rob? Rock comes from the, the Hebrew word kabah, to cover, defraud, diminish, or destroy the value of. So when it said, will a man rob God, you're saying that God is not who he is. Remember, because God had what? He had a system in place. From the land, you pay the tithes to the, to the Levite, mm -hmm. right? They feed you. I'm with you. And that system is going to take care of itself. Even the land is going to prosper in that system that I have in place. But now that y'all separated, I, I forgot one thing. See, because at this time, Levite was now forced to go out and work. The, the Levites was no longer in the temple. They was doing other stuff. Because now they got to survive. You see that? So, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. You're not trusting me. You're not trusting the system that I put in place. You're going out doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. You see? But you say, where in have we robbed me? In tithes and offering. My offering system that I had set up and my tithing system that I had in place for my people. You're not <laughs> worshiping me. You're not doing anything. And you're not being fed the word. Mm. Verse 9. So ye are cursed with the curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Since you're not trusting in me, you're being disobedient to me. What? You're cursed with a curse. Now, what? This is, where's the connection to this? Verse 9. It's Deuteronomy 28. The curse is for being disobedient. Mm -hmm. Right? Deuteronomy 28. The curse is for dis being disobedient. Mm -hmm. You are cursed because you've been disobedient to me. You know, God said, okay, if you become disobedient, then all of these curses, the people are going to copy, all of these things are going to happen to you for being disobedient. All right? Verse 10. Verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there may not be room enough to receive. Bring ye all of the tithes. We, we know the tithes is what? From the land, right? Yeah. Bring ye all the tithes into the what? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. What is the storehouse? The storehouse is that, 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 that treasure house for corn, for food, for provision. That's what the storehouse is. So bring ye all the, stock, all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring the provisions, the food and stuff, into the storehouse, the place where they store the food. Because what is the food for? What is the tithes for? For the Levites. Right? This is where they are. So bring it back. God said, come back to me and I'm going to return to you. So bring the tithes into the storehouse that there may be what? Me. That there may be what? Me what does meat mean? It's from the Hebrew word Torah. Mm -hmm. It means food. So bring the food 
into the place where we store the food so we can have food in my house. That's what God is saying. Right? And prove me now herewith. So God is saying right here, and prove me now herewith. So God is saying, now come back and trust me. Come back and trust me because y'all don't got away from trusting me. Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. Because remember, in God's system, everything was working. He had a system in place. Even the, the, the poor people was able to eat too in his system. Mm -hmm. But when they got away from his system, now everything God had to separate himself from because they become wicked. Right? Yeah. Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. So uh, right here, and see when we start talking about cursing and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you curse with a curse. You ain't giving your money. I will rebuke the I will I, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. What is a devourer? Come come eat up. Yeah. Not just something that comes and eat up, but what do they eat up? The food. What food? That's in the storehouse. The food in the ground. <laughs> the food in the ground. The devourer eats the fruit in the ground. Mm -hmm. The fruits and the vegetables in the ground. You see, so what was growing, the devourer would eat that, would destroy that. So God is saying, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, because don't stop right there. And he shall not Destroy the fruits of your ground. You see that? That's not it. See, we don't say this part. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit. What? Before the time. Because if, it, if the crop is premature, you can't eat it either. Mm -hmm. But notice how none of this has anything to do with money. Mm -hmm. You see that? You see that? And then it's saying that in all the nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. So now he's going back to 28, Deuteronomy 28, the blessings part. Because now when you come back to me, do what I say to do, buy back into my system, trust in me. Because understand this, what does God want from us? He wants us to trust him. That's why I say, first seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And then everything else is going to be added. He wants us to trust him. You see? And that's what he said. If you trust me, you're obedient, there, there's blessings. Mm -hmm. If you're disobedient, you don't trust me, then guess what? There are consequences. You see? So what, what we saw is, what we saw is that Tyler referred to agriculture, fruit, trees, livestock, dough, wine, earth, spice, and all. Now, here's the question. When did the Levitical priesthood end? When did the Levitical priesthood end? Anybody know? When Jesus, died. when Jesus died. When Jesus died, the Levitical priesthood ended. Mm -hmm. Right here. Matthew 27, 50. Jesus, when he had uh, cried again with a loud verse, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Because this is saying that, okay, guess what? Now, I no longer need to go to the priest. Who goes to God on my behalf? That system is over. Mm -hmm. Are y'all understanding that? Because also, let me tell you this. Also, even with um, even with the offering system that they had in place. Remember, they had the peace offering, the unintentional offerings, uh, the meat offering, all of these things that they have in place. Guess what? You understand that God is that that Jesus is peace, mm -hmm. right? We get peace through Him. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. So this is why I always say it switched from being physical. They had to physically do these things to spiritual. Now, what is our offering? Because somebody said this the other day. Yeah, well, if that's the case, then the offer system, um, how the offer system going to be spiritual? Because now you present your body as a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. That's, your, that's your offering. Mm -hmm. That part of it. Now, with the money part, that's still in, but we're we going to cover that. We're going to cover that. We're going we, to we'll cover that. All right, so that's what happened with the, uh, when the Levitical priesthood ended at the cross. Mm -hmm. All right? So therefore, you should be thinking in your mind, if tithe and offering was connected to the priest, 
the promised land, the priests, and the, the Levitical priesthood ended. So what about tithes? Who do you give them to? Huh? That's a great question. Who do you give them to? Mm -hmm. Hmm. So pretty much today, um, there is no no um, no Levitical priesthood, and this goes back to to that law of Moses when Jesus said in five Matthew five and seventeen, "Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill." Now let me switch it up. Let's go to some money. What is the New Testament law of giving? Anybody ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. What is it? Yeah. A cheerful giver. Hmm. Second Corinthians nine and six says, "Okay, um, by this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully." Because now we're making everything do by money, right? Verse 7 says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful, cheerful, giver. cheerful giver. Okay, because now we're talking about what? We're dealing with what? No. We're talking about money. Okay, what's your question? My question is, uh, when he talks about uh, God said, it's a give, it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaking together, running over, men shall give unto your bosom. Mm -hmm. That's talking about money there too. It is a it it is it's connected to money, but it is also a um what do you call it? What do you call the example? Oh I didn't know it was an what, example. What is the example called the Bible? Apparel. Apparel. Okay. okay. So understand this, because once again, there are blessings attached to your giving. Okay, you understand that? There are blessings attached to your giving. But hold on to that because we're, we're talking about money. We're talking about money now. Yeah. Mr. Davis asks from Facebook, did Jesus pay tithes? Huh. Or a Bible verse. Okay. So I, I don't know of a, a Bible verse where Jesus paid tithes, but we have to understand that uh, Jesus came up in the, during the time that Jesus came up, he did adhere to what was going on. Right? We understand that? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but I haven't found a scripture that says that he paid tithes. All right, Mr. Davis? All right? Cool? All right. But, like I said, we know that Jesus, whatever was in place, he still did that. It's just that he introduced uh, something new for, he introduced a new covenant, what was coming up. Okay? All right. Um, let's go to, um, oh, we were talking about the New Testament law of giving. And so my thing is, it's not really the New Testament law of giving. It's nothing new. And I'm going to tell you why it's nothing new. Because when we go back to the Old Testament, remember I was talking about that sixth type of offering? Mm -hmm. What was that sixth type of offering? Free will. Free will. So let's go back to the Old Testament and see something. Exodus 25 says, 25 and 2, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me a what? Offering. offering. Okay, because now we're getting ready to build the tabernacle. Of every man that what? Give it it willingly, willingly in his heart because what? This is about the heart. But now we're talking about the valuable stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Ye shall take, take my offering, okay? And this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Gold, silver, brass. You see all the valuable that's coming in place? Mm -hmm. Blue, purple, scarlet, fire, linen, goat's hair, ram skin, dyed red, badger skin, shittim wood, oil for light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, onyx stones, and stones to be set in the effort, and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. <coughs> so God is saying, <coughs> God is saying, okay, now I need some valuable. I need an offering. But guess what? I ain't going to take your offering from you. Everybody that's willing. Mm -hmm. You see that? Everybody that's willing. When it comes down to your money, because what is God concerned with? The heart. The heart. Always. I say he ain't going to make you serve him. Right? Everything about God is about the what? About the heart. So even when it comes down to your money, it's still about the heart. Because listen, offering for me of your valuables, willing heart. Every man according as he purpose it, in his heart. Never change. Because if you give for the wrong reason, guess what? That press down shaking together? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. 
<laughs> it's not going to happen because you're not giving for the right reason. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but then also, now here's what's amazing. In, in, in Exodus 36, what's happening here in 36 is the people don't gave so much. Why are they giving? Because guess what? It's from their heart. But listen, the people don't gave so much that, and they received the most, all the offering mm -hmm. which the children of Israel had brought for their work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. How often did they bring it? Every morning. Every morning, free offerings. And they spake unto Moses saying, watch this. The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave command. And they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. You see that? So now, so let me let me tell you this. See, this is for the pastors that believe that if we if we uh, teach that tithing is not required, the people ain't gonna give. See. That type of thinking is the same thing that's in Malachi 3, will a man rob God? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that God is not who he is? Because right here, when God asked them, they gave. They gave, mm -hmm. they gave more than enough. Mm -hmm. Are y'all seeing this? Mm -hmm. So that means it's a lie. That's why I say, if there is a pastor that, that, that doesn't want to teach tithing, that, that tithing is Old Testament, and all that, what is your personal gain in it? And a lot of times, that's what it is. Wow. They ain't going to give. They ain't going to give nothing. My money going to be messed up. But it's either you trust God or you don't trust God. Which one is it? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't trust God and you're trying to manipulate the people, then you're robbing God. You're saying that God is not who he is. You're defrauding God. Mm -hmm. You see that? By the New Testament, tithing had ended. Okay? You don't see besides that reference that, 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 that Jesus made, you don't see anything about tithing in the New Testament. And y'all, y'all have any idea why? Huh? Y'all know why? Why? Why you don't see a reference to tithing in the New Testament? Because the priesthood had stopped. Right? Now watch this. Let's watch Paul. Acts 18 and 3. And because he was of the same Christ, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation. They were tent makers. Now Paul is saying that he was a tent maker. Mm -hmm. Paul is saying that he was working. Right? First, First Thessalonians 2. And 9 says, For ye remember, brethren, our labor and our travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. So he's saying that, wait a minute, this not, this not, we're not y'all burden. We're not going to be a burden on y'all to take care of us, giving you the gospel of, of God. You see that? That's what we're doing. Are y'all seeing that? Huh? Y'all with me? Mm-hmm. We will not be chargeable unto you. You see that? Paul was telling you that he was working. Because understand this. In the New Testament, if anybody was going to be receiving tithes, guess who it would have been? Paul. Y'all understand that? How important Paul was in the New Testament? Okay, but Paul let you know that he was working. Paul said that, hey, we, we, we're not going to be a burden on you. We, we're preaching you the gospel here. Okay? Now let's go to something, another question that people have an issue with. Here it is, right here. Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Okay, so what's the significance of this? They say that because Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek, that was before the law, so therefore, we should be paying tithes now. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so watch this. Watch this. Let's, 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 let's go ahead and clear this up. Genesis 14, 18 says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought for bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which had delivered thine enemies into thine hand, and he gave him tithes of all. You see that? And he gave him tithes of all. So, let's go back here. What does tithe mean? 
It's a tenth part. It's a tenth. A tenth part of what? Of the land. Of the land. All right. Of the land. That's what it, the tenth part. Tithe is a tenth part. Now, that's what tithe means, a tenth part. Mm -hmm. Okay, we understand that the, the tithe that Israel was required to pay was of the land. Mm -hmm. All right? So now, what I'm going to have to show you is that this tithe that Abram, Abram paid was a tenth of something else. Because tithe is just what? A tenth part. So to do this, let's go, let's go to uh, Numbers 31. Because what was happening? Abraham had came back from war. Mm -hmm. All right? He had came back from war. Okay? Look at this. Numbers 31 and 3. Israel. Back from war. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the wall. So now Israel is going to the wall. Right? Mm -hmm. And let them go against the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives and their little ones and took the spoil of all their cattle and all their flocks and all their goods. Verse 11. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. Mm -hmm. Drop down to verse 26 and it says, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation. What does prey mean? Malpoa, which means captives, booty, spoil. Okay? Let's see what's going on. And divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them and went out to battle, and between all the congregation. So what are they doing? Dividing They're dividing the spoils, the spoils what they've taken. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and here we go. And levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle. One soul of 500, both the persons and of the beeves and of the asses and of the sheep. Take it of their half and give it unto Eleazar, who? The priest. For what? A a heave offering. For an heave offering. All right? So what we're seeing is that at war, whenever they got something from war, they had to pay a spoil for it. Are y'all seeing that? Because understand this, nothing happens in the Bible out of place just one time and then that's it. Mm -hmm. So when you say that, that Abraham paid tithes and therefore we should still be paying tithes, no, because it wasn't even for Abraham what he paid. He had just got this from war and what Abraham said, I'm not taking up none of it because I don't want you to say that you made me rich. Mm -hmm. See, that's what Abraham said. So it didn't even belong to him. He paid a tenth of the spoil. Watch this, but let's go to Hebrews 7 and 2 says, To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. See that? Mm -hmm. See that what it says now? He gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Now consider how great this man was unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of what? Uh -huh. So that means that Abraham wasn't paying a tithe like Israel was paying. He was paying a tenth of his souls. You see that? See how we, we have to make that connection? All right. So let's go here. How was tithe re-implemented? If they wasn't paying tithe in the, in the, in the Old Testament, how was tithe re-implemented? Hmm. Let's figure out. How anybody want to guess how tithing was re-implemented? You know how we do today? We want to go back to how it used to be, huh? Mm -hmm. We don't do. We don't sing the same old songs no more. We don't have revival no more. You know, we always want to live in the past. Same thing happened with this. So what happened is. During the, um, it started off with, with Cyprian, um, and Cyprian reintroduced the idea of paying tithes, of actually supporting the clergy, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we started off with, Cyprian. That was, in the, uh, that was in the third century, but it didn't happen then. Then, in the 500s, now you come along, and what happened is the church gets reorganized. Right? Mm -hmm. Now we now we're five hundred years after Christ. The church is now being reorganized. So the, the bishop became like the Old Testament priest. The presbyters or the priests became like the, the Old Testament priest, same thing. And the deacons are like the Old Testament Levites. 
So they started rearranging things. Because what are we dealing with? We're dealing with the Catholic Church now. Mm -hmm. Same Catholic Church that's, that's always accepting things and, and, and starting something new, allowing people in, polluting the word of God and, and all of this. That's what we're dealing with, right? So the church basically reorganized itself. And the problem is, and what they did, they encouraged all the men that were working, you know, in the, in the, in, inside the, the church, mm -hmm. quit your job. Because if you quit your job, now we'll have a reason to justify <coughs> you being supportive. Mm -hmm. You see, going back to how things used to be. Y'all understand that? So now, but here's the thing. Remember the, all the different types of time here, the yearly time, the festival time, 30-year time, seven-year, no time. Remember all of that? Mm -hmm. What do we have now? Every Sunday time. Well. The annual time. <laughs> That's it. So they were selective in what they re-implemented. You understand that? So they didn't re-implement everything that was going on. No, this thing is going to be continued. There's no seven-year tithe. You, you see what I'm saying? Now it's all about what? It's all about the money. So we changed from being able to take care and give them the food to take care. Now it's money. You see how, how everything switched over? But like I said, they, they, they were selective in what they, they re-implemented. They didn't, didn't re-implement the shim of the cycle. No, because that's going to have a year. We ain't going to get no money. Mm -hmm. See, this is how you understand that it's, it's all about money. You see? Because what about the, the festival time? When you were able to have the festivals three times a year, what about that? Mm -hmm. And you get to enjoy your own time. What about that? Mm -hmm. Not that. We're not having that. Not having that. It's all about the money. You understand that? So, here, now here's the thing. Um... And basically, let me, let me say this. Basically, it was, I think it was in the 700s. Uh, I, I know I had it written down somewhere. I don't, I don't see it in my notes. But basically, in the 700s is when they actually implemented it and they were spending time. And they started off by saying that, okay, if you don't pay tithe, then guess what? You're guilty of sin. It became a sin. Does that, does that ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Because all of that is what led to you yeah, curse with a curse. Mm -hmm. You see? It happened back then. Because they're trying to force you to do what? To pay the tithes. Right? Now, now here's, here's the thing. As I said earlier, um, the church has to be supported. Mm -hmm. Okay? There are blessings attached to your giving. Now, if this teaching causes you to stop giving, then you wasn't giving for the right reason from the start. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Like I said, there are blessings attached to your giving when you give from the heart. God has to honor that. That's the principle of God. Whatever you do for God, guess what? He has to come back and bless you. All right? And as, as 2 Corinthians 9, 8 through 12 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have an all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work, as it is written, He that dispersed abroad, he that... Had he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Now he that ministered seed unto the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown. You understand that? Guess what? When you when you honor God, you see that because it's God the one that that's allowing all of this to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and increase your fruits of your righteousness, mm -hmm. being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. Which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So here's what we learned. Now, and, and, and guess what? Let me, let, me, let me say this. No, let me let me just recap what we what we learned uh, right quick. Uh, what we learned is we learned that even though Israel had money. Tithing had nothing to do with money. Mm -hmm. Right? When did their money come into play with tithing? When they converted the When they converted tithing. it or when they wanted to do what? Keep it. Yeah. Oh, which is another thing. That's a, that's a great point. Which is another thing. So think about it today. If you want to keep your tithe, you add a fifth to it. See how crazy that would be? 
If you want to keep your own pay your money, then you add a fifth to it and pay that amount. It doesn't make sense, right? So if I wanted to keep my fruit, uh, keep my fruit and just give the Levites money. That's right. Whatever the fruit was worth, and you add a tenth to it. Mm. That's how it worked. Um, we also understand we, we covered that Abraham paid a tenth of his spoils from war, which was required by Israel. He did not pay tithe, he paid a tenth of his spoils from war. Okay? We understand that tithing ended in the New Testament um, when, when Christ at the cross. That's when the Levitical priesthood was abolished because Christ became our priest. Y'all understand that? So, and here's the thing. Here's why this type of teaching is important. Because when you start, when you teach tithe, when you teach tithing, um, it's symbolic of saying that Christ is not who he is. And that he did not do what he did at the cross. Because before that, they were cursed. So if you go back and teach tithing, it's like you putting a curse back on the people. And also, understand this. If you are influencing the people to give because, okay, God is saying give it or you're going to be cursed, you know, this and that, guess what? That's a form of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Because you're manipulating the mind. Oh, yeah. God is nowhere in it. And once again, God does not bless you because of what you call it, because you call it a tithe or an offering. God blesses you because it's from your heart mm -hmm. and whatever you give. Because you, you have to realize this. Not grudgingly or out of necessity. I've heard pastors say, okay, you ain't got it no way. You might as well give it. Give it. You ain't got your life bill anyway. You might as well get after God. Mm -hmm. The Bible never says that sowing a seed is your answer for anything. When it, when it comes to you need a blessing, sow a seed. That's not what the Bible says. You need a healing, sow a seed. Sow a thousand dollars seed. Even when they get down to the churches, we got the thousand dollar line, ten thousand dollar line. Really? What what is the biblical principle behind it? Because it's what? It's all about money. money. And then you got people that are partaking in it because guess what? Because of the show. This is the same thing that Paul was saying, what Paul was trying to put in order. Because now they're doing it for a show. God is not honoring that. You don't have anything coming. There's no return on that. But a lot of times it's out of desperation also. Yeah. You're desperate. Mm -hmm. And they have our blessing. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that obedience, I mean. Yes, he wants you to give me It's more better than sacrifice. That's right. Because you, you have to understand if you honor God, if you trust God, then God will make a way. You know, once was young, but never, now I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. You have got to trust God. And that's what Israel had done. They had gotten away from trusting God. And they, you know what? The Levites said, hey, we got to go out and work. We got to do something. Because this thing ain't working. Because God said, y'all ain't trusting me. And anytime you don't trust, God's not going to come in and say, hey, listen, what are you doing? Come on and grab you and break. No. God's not going to do that. You have free will. You have a question? Go ahead. I'm just saying that um, God must rather more of you, more of your, um, you pouring out your heart and yourself to him than the uh, tangible stands and material things. Right, because it's all about the heart. Yeah. Listen, God doesn't need your money. What can you get? The cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. What, what can you give him? Think about that. Oh, I, you know what? You know what else I, I, I failed to mention before I. So that means the people that think that that you can tithe your time. Time is not one of the times. <laughs> that is impossible. You know why it's impossible? Is anybody know why it's impossible now? Well, we know that it wasn't even in the Old Testament. You can't give time because time don't come from the land. But right now, you need to understand that, too. You were bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Your whole life belongs to God. Your whole life belongs to God. So how are you going to give God 10% of, your of, when you belong. Of, of what belongs to him? How do you even measure out 10% of your time? Let's, let's go down. How, what, are you, what are you basing it on? That makes no sense. Go ahead. I belong to a church where, um, at the time, I didn't have a job. I was living in um, Milton. And that's what the pastor would tell us, to tie it out with time. And all that is, is manipulation because 
the tabernacle, the church was reigned by the Levitical priesthood. He didn't need the people from the outside to come in and do things in the church. I mean, that's right. Now, if you study, it's common sense. But back then, especially if you don't know and you have a heart to give, you just want to be obedient to the Lord. And that's why how that's how a lot of this stuff get put on mm -hmm. people because they want to be obedient. Hmm. And see, you have to, like I said, you have to trust God. But like you, you made a great, uh, very important point. Which is even the leap of the janitors and stuff that was working there, guess what? But they still had a tithe of what they was receiving. Mm -hmm. So you won't volunteer in the church and, you, you know, it's all out of order. If, and my thing is this. If it is not biblical, if the Bible doesn't mention it, that means it's not true. That's what the Bible said. Let God be true and every man a lie. So much of stuff that we, we accept and celebrate is, is out of order. Where did it come from? Like the kitchen ministry. <laughs> the kitchen ministry. Everything is a ministry now. Just you know, everything is a ministry now. Because we, we, want, we want a title. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? So you have to get to a point where you stand on the word of God. Which is why at, at Meticulous Word Ministry, y'all, you already know. We take the tradition, everything about tradition, everything that is not biblical, we take it and we remove it meticulously and, and, and replace it with the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's how it has to be in order for you to read. Because you can't just take stuff away. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. You, you need to know why. Why that's not true. But I'm not going to just tell you what it is. No, we're going to go through the Bible. We're going to see. I'm going to let you look at the Bible and see what the Bible says about it. Because you can argue with Derek. But there's no way for you to argue with the Word of God. You see? And that's how it has to be. We have to because so much that we celebrate was implemented by people that possibly wasn't even believers. What about that? And now, thousands of years later, we're just celebrating it. Don't know where it come from. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, we've been doing it all of this time. Like, no. You need to go back to the Word of God because the Bible said that Jesus is saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. So, we have to get to that point. Okay, so, uh, any other questions? Nobody? All right. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for peace. We thank you for being God. God, we ask that you would.